If you're new here, welcome in. And if you know me, welcome back to the channel. I have another great video for you guys. So the NBA 2K25 gameplay trailer just dropped. And up until the rollout, I want to talk about NBA game modes in NBA 2K that I miss, that I want to go back and kind of talk about and really just appreciate the game modes that we got. And I'm going to hypothesize why I think that this is no longer in the game mode. So if you want to continue this series, feel free to like, comment with other game modes that you want me to cover. So if you're new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, everything helps uh, me as a creator. I appreciate you guys. The goal is to try to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Now, if you are familiar with my channel, you might have seen a video where I talked about NBA 2K10 and I talked about the start of my career mode and why I love their my career mode because I love that my career mode because compared to other 2Ks, the later 2Ks, you can bypass all of the hard work, all the hours in the gym, all the hours in practice mode and drills just by paying with VC and that kind of shortcut. And it's also tied in online. So you feel kind of pressured to pay VC so you can keep up with the people that are already paying with VC. It's a it's a wild cycle, I'll say that. But back in NBA 2K12, my career was still my career. And NBA 2K12 expanded on my career with a game mode called NBA Creating a Legend. Now, NBA Creating a Legend, for those of you that don't know, was my career, but you could choose any player in the league, which is absolutely sick so if i wanted to choose any player in the league i could use that player's attributes current attributes and build to play in my career and it goes all the way to the top i could play as derrick rose or i could go all the way down here and play as kyle corver i think it was really cool because this game mode gave you so many options you were able to choose your favorite player you were able to choose your favorite rookie on your favorite team and build out their career however far you wanted to, right? You could play as Blake Griffin, but you could also play as anyone here. You could play as Eric Bledsoe, who's 21, try to make him one of the best players in the league. It's gonna take a lot more work than the Blake Griffin one, but that's the thing, is that by choosing your player, you choose the difficulty of creating a legend, which I think is really sick here. And as you can see, there are so many options. So I'm going to choose Paul George, who here is a 74. He's 21. And in time, you can make Paul George into the player that he is today or better. So the cool thing about Create a Legend is that the menu is very similar to the NBA 2K10 My Career, where you have drills, you have your paydays, you have a skill point balance you have to earn. And it's... Again, it's just like my career, but they were like, hey, what if we actually also were able to make it my career, but any player in the league? And I think that that's a great way of combining the single player mode of my career. But also, if you're an NBA fan, just putting those two together, I think it's a perfect blend of possibilities that you can do with this game. It also really ups the replay value in terms of, yes, you can do my career, you can create any player, but here you can choose any player that you want. And I think that that's more unique than having all of these like builds that you have to make or whatnot. If I just want a Paul George build in this my career, I can just pick Paul George. And as usual, they have the standard drills here to be able to uh, improve your player. Again, it's really simple. It's just a lot like my career, except, you know, you're just an NBA player. And while it's such a simple premise, the idea of it is really cool. Here I'm facing off against Lance Stevenson, obviously. Oh, I missed that layup. Oh, what was that air ball? <laughs> Lance with an air ball, buddy. But again, you see here, just nice and simple stuff. Paul George right now isn't the best three-point shooter in the game, but it's something that we can definitely strive to work at. And that's the thing, is that you can make a completely different archetype than the Paul George that we know and love today, right? And that's the beauty of all of this. You can make an NBA player work on different things, right? Like if you wanted to give Chicago Bulls Derrick Rose more of a jump shot. That's definitely possible. There it is. I got, oh, did I get silver? Oh, I got silver. 
So I got silver in this drill. So again, I got 400 skill points and plus one to my three point shot. And that's like very important in the grand scheme of things because we're going to see, you're going to see how expensive skill points are. So with the skill points that you accumulate, you're able to improve your inside shot, your close shot. And you see how here, adding one to the three point shot, even though I only earned 400 skill points in that drill, being able to add one to my three point shot just from that drill alone is very important. And right now you have all of these abilities that again, the more games I play, the more skill points I'm able to uh, build up and each attribute has their own cost, just like it does in the current 2Ks. You also have the ability to make your fadeaway, pull-up jumper, spin jumper, and runner uh, average or certain efficiency. I never understood how much this changed everything, but it's such a big increase that it takes a lot of time to accrue. Also, you had a bunch of milestones that you were able to get to have more skill points, whether it's making 10 three-pointers in a game, or they had season skill points as well. If I lead the league in threes, I get 2,500 skill points. So after a season, if you're absolutely balling, the more you, the better you play, the more skill points you obviously uh, accrue. And then you have these career skill points as well. And the thing about this is that, I didn't know this at the time, but the thing about this is that apparently Paul George is career skill points that he already has is already like listed here so it's listed that he has 476 career points in the game so i guess we're just starting off with that it also keeps track of how many three pointers he already has this is before i've even played a game like this is really cool this should be in the mm, this should still be in the games man i also have other apparently i've already completed the 100 rebounds thing so i don't know but i don't get the skill points for that it looks like as usual, I can request trades. They're, the Clippers are interested in me. That's very ironic, knowing what we know. Then again, here's my current minutes. Right now, I'm playing 28 minutes per game. I like that it shows you how many minutes that you currently have in each game. But the cool thing is, is that even though if I was playing as the 12th man, even if I was playing as Josh McRoberts or Mike Dunleavy, I still get minutes. This is really unrealistic in the NBA. You don't really get a 12 person rotation ever. But it says here that my role is a six man. I'm going to respect that. And I'm going to play and try to earn my spot. I can try to get Dante Jones out of the starting lineup. Also, it keeps track of how many skill points that I've earned, as you see in Start a Legend. And then I have my objectives. It's just like my career, right? Just grab at least four rebounds, all of that. And it's just so... And the thing about this also is that this was at a time where 2K gameplay was like the peak smoothness, in my opinion. And it just made playing this so much fun. So right now I'm playing Detroit and I'm starting on the bench because I am a six man after all. And as usual, in normal 2Ks, you have the option to watch, but I'm not going to do that. But I enter the game in right away. Who am I guarding? Charlie Villanueva. Also, this mode had dynamic goals where they gave you goals based on your recent performances and stuff. So it kind of... It kind of tracks how you play and then gives you a goal based on how you're playing, which I think is really sick. They tell me make three of my first four shots, see if that's possible. So while that's not like the be all end all is what it is. Now, currently I'm subbed in as a power forward, so I'm outside of my position really. But Paul George is a versatile person, so I get it. The thing about this mode is this was back when your teammate grade was so sensitive. Oh, this is me? No, I'm setting the screen. Oh, they want me to set the screen. Okay. Best screen assist for me? Nope. <laughs> Just playing team basketball right now. <laughs> is what it is. So yeah, this was the game mode. It was just playing 2K12, but you were player locked on the Paul George and you were trying to make him such a better player. I got to switch on the Villanueva here. Nope. Oh no. Who got hurt? Who is that? I don't know who that is. Oh, look, Roy Hibbert. I moved to small forward now because someone got hurt. I don't think that's usually in the game. Oh, George Hill got hurt. Oh, man, that does that doesn't usually happen. That's a, that was a freak happenstance. This wasn't an extra storyline. No, pass me the rock, bro. Oh, my goodness. Oh. 
Oh, I don't I don't have any pull. Oh, they're they are not giving me the rock. <laughs> Come on, Collison. Oh, they not even. They not even. They don't care about me. I gotta get my own. But again, that was one of the things with this game is that if you did run plays, the plays were not always run for you. But you really had to be patient and get yours. So it's very realistic. It's as realistic as you make the mode. And I think that there was something about playing the realistic style of basketball. Even though you were playing as one person, but you only had one person to account for, which was sick. I just get up another layup here. Of course, I could call for the ball, and I did. And I called. There's a bad pass. Got some screens. I got. I got to get in position to. Oh, well. Here I am. First shot. No good. Ah, good shot selection though. At least they didn't punish me for that. Good block. Yeah. Oh no. That's not my that's not my guy. Okay, good. Here we go. That's Ben Wallace. Let me relax. Nope. Psych. There we go. The shot making in 2K12 was awesome. It didn't feel like, oh, I'm just said I'm near a player, I'm gonna miss automatically. So that was one of my favorite things. Oh, I got Oh no, they switched. No, you're not supposed to switch on that. Come on, Dante. Nah, I'm definitely taking Dante Jones spot in the lineup. He is, he's lost on defense. This is not this is not my fault. And that's what I think the coolest part about creating a legend mode is, is that you can choose your situation. You can choose your scenario. Like, for example, if you wanted a young player that just has the entire team already, like they already trust him. They already know you can do whatever. Derrick Rose is a great pick. Or if you wanted to have more of a challenge at this stage of your life in terms of like, whatever team it was you could often pick the golden state warriors because you had steph curry who's like still young but he's also one of the best players on this team pick monte ellis there's so many possibilities that you could choose in this game it's just a game mode that i really enjoy going back to i think the big reason why this isn't in current 2ks is because that this game mode doesn't make 2k any extra money Right, you can go through in this entire game, even if there was VC and create a legend. I feel like people that play the My Career for just single player mode only don't spend VC at all, and there's no online function for this. So I really think that that's the reason why this game mode was subbed out in lieu of more lucrative game modes, which makes it sad for me because I don't think that this game mode needs that much upkeep. I don't think that this game mode is that hard to 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 keep in the game. I'm going to be honest with you. It's just picking a player. It's just basically player locking someone as a my career. It's it. And I think that this was easier also when you were able to just mirror my career. And now my career has so many cutscenes, so many side quests and all of that. I'm not trying to play as Paul George and also do side quests. I think that a lot of the my career storylines involve a player not being good or a player not being as good as they're going to be it's still the storylines of nba 2k are just like you are a player and you gotta grind to get to the top but what if you start this mode as derrick rose and you always had to do side quests or something like that i totally get it but at the same time this this game mode should not be tied to my career my player if it's if my player is what it is now I think that this game mode is very viable still to this day. It's awesome. I would have loved to be able to play a my career as Cade Cunningham, essentially, or an Evan Mobley or one of the rookies, one, like Franz Wagner. There are so many players in today's NBA where I would like to use this game mode and play as, but we just don't have that because this game mode does not make any extra money for 2K as soon as it started. Well, that's all for me. Thank you guys for watching the end of the video. If you liked it, please give it a like. Please subscribe. Please comment. I love you guys. I'll see you guys at the end of the next video or the beginning of the next video. My bad. Later, y'all. Bye.